Okay, welcome to our mapping series that we have been working on so far. Uh, so I wanted to show you guys how to change some of the symbology, but also bring in your GPS data. So if this is the project that you've been digitizing, and if I turn, if you go over to the contents over here, and I'm going to turn off world imagery. So now I can actually see the work that I have done. So I actually might recommend doing this first rather than doing it the um, doing it the way that I did in class, just because then you know exactly what you've done and you know exactly what you're looking at. So I'm going to show the symbology first, and then I'm going to show you how to bring in the data, and then you can change and change the symbology again. So here um, I have polygons, I have lines, and I have points all across my my map. And so if I want to see what attributes I've um, created for, for example, my bench. If I right click on bench over in my contents, I can go to attribute table. Now it's going to load and it shows that I haven't put in any um, any fields, so, so I know that I'm not going to be able to change any colors based on anything. But let's say I want to change symbology. So let's say I'm doing something very simple and I just want to change the bench and I want all the benches to look the same. I'm not going to show anything different. So I'm going to double click on that drawing order. So there's this little dot here. And then I'm, it's going to open up this symbology tab. Now it might show up over top of the catalog as well. So depending on what, how you've got everything set up, you can certainly change it. Now I can type in here to search. So I can type in bench and see if it shows up. And look at this, I've got a bunch of benches. So I'm like, great, that's the one that I want there. So I'm going to double click that, make sure that it's in, and then I can close this section. Now you can see here that it's really tiny. So now all, anything that's been identified as a bench is just going to be super, super tiny. So I'm going to double click that symbol again. And I'm going to go back to the symbology tab. If you click on this properties beside the, the, the gallery, you're going to see size. Now this one's at four points, and this is the example of what it looks like. So if I don't want that, maybe I'm going to try 20 and press enter. And now it makes it a little bit bigger. Maybe I want it a little bit bigger. So I'm going to go 30. And now I can really see that that's a bench. So that's what I want. So I'm going to click apply. And then I can close this, this window. So I don't have any benches in here. So, but if I wanted to create some, again, going back to um, how to digitize, I could click edit. I can go to databases. I can find you know, where I've got that saved, or I can just click on create. It says bench here. So maybe I turn back on my world imagery and I'm gonna find a bench. So there's a bench there and a bench there and a bench there. Go back up here and hit save. Yes, clear. It's gonna save, it's gonna clear everything. And then now I've got my benches in there. So when I turn this off, I've got my benches. So now if I go to my trees, I want to see if I've changed anything. Nope, I don't have any fields in that one. I know that I put something into class building though. And I see name here. So now with this name, I know that I can actually edit it. So I'm going to put in what they are. So my, if I click on this one, it highlights it. Um, and if so, if I can, the other way I can do that is by clicking this one button and it'll put a little blue line around it. So I know exactly which one I'm working with. And so if I want to add a name, for example, in here, I'm going to double click on name and I'm going to put in Senator Burns. And then this one must be the second one. Oops. So if I highlight this too, it's going to highlight that one. And I know that's the John Ware building. So I go John Ware and then I can clear and I'm going to save. So yes. So now I can see that I have different attributes for that one. So now if I wanted to change some of my lines, so for example, I have this line up here, I can go to my roads and I can double click on it and it allows me to go to my gallery or I can just do it from properties, it shows me the color here. So maybe I want it to be more of a brown color and maybe I want a little bit thicker. 
So it shows up here. I can always see how it changes. Click apply and then I can close that and you can see how it's changed. Now if I don't like the, that it's looking like that, um, I can double click on the symbol, go to gallery. It will give me different options here as to how it should look. Maybe I want a dashed line um, or maybe a, a dot. Maybe I want a hatch line. So I can change those or a zigzag. Maybe I want the zigzag and then I can go to properties and change it to that brown color again. So I hit apply. Now it's going to look like that. And when I go back to here, I can see that I've got my wiggly line. I can also do this with, um, with the polygons. So if I have my parking lots here, Again, I can right click and say, is there an attribute there? Nope, there isn't, just the information about the spatial data. So I can double click on that one and maybe I can go to cal gallery. Maybe there's something in here that I really like um, that might, might work for me. There's some, some other options if you want to take a look, I can show how to do that in class. So maybe I just want to cross hatch because that's what looks best to me. and close it and now I've got now you can see how the the lines start to like really get annoying <laughs> so there's my different lots and so I can do that with any of my polygons now the one thing that is different is that if you, when you actually have an attribute so for example my class building if we go back to that and I go back to attribute table I have the name in there so maybe I want to color every building a different color depending on its name so to do that, I actually have to right click on the name in contents, and then I go to symbology, which is found right here. And now it opens up a little bit of a different window. So the primary symbology is where I can change things and how I'm going to symbolize it. So a single symbol just means that everything is all the same. Everything is colored exactly the same. Um, there's unique values. So for example, if I um, want everything that has a different value, it, let's say I have two things that are labeled Senator Burns. Both things that are labeled Senator Burns are going to be the same color, but everything else is going to be different. So basis is on that, that value that you give it. Um, then there's, these are all like, val like sorry, quantitative values. So I can choose these ba and base them on, oh, I want to you know, change the color. So for example, if I was like, oh, I want to do it based on size of the building, I could do graduated color or I could make it a point symbol. So I'm going to use unique values because I want it to be based on the name of the building. So my field one is the one that it's going to base it on. So I click down and I click name. And now you can see how these two buildings are different colors. If I don't like the colors that they chose, or I can use this down, drop down, and there's a bunch of different options here. So maybe I want that one instead. There's also this color scheme options. So I can say to do it to fill an outline or just the outline or apply to fill. Or the other option I can do is go down to where it actually says symbol. And I can format this symbol by well, not so much that, but I can double click on this and now I go back to the same thing. So maybe I want that building to be a glacier. So you can see how it turns out there. And now I just closed that by accident. And then maybe this one, I want that to be a buffered gradient. And it looks like that. So now I can, you can see that I'm able to change my polygons to different different colors and I can base it on what they are are actually relating to so that's what you're going to do is you're going to spend their time going through and changing the symbols so that I can define between them I would like you to use the attributes that you have set up to be able to do this because it would it, if you have used attributes because that will help you with making the symbols a little bit different for, from each other so the where you really set up attributes was in your GPS stuff. So I'm going to show you how to do that. Um, and so I'm going to click, uh, actually, you know what? I'm going to do that in a different video. So I'll load two videos. So that's how you change symbology for this. And I'm going to stop here.